the second paragraph on page 37. <coughs> if you are resolute in your intention and are more sincere, you will both be more pure-hearted than ancients and surpass even the elders in attentiveness. The appropriate manner of putting the mind of the way to work on this is to decide that even if the old masters got three coins and made the broth of coarse cream, now with the same three, three coins you will make a high-quality cream soup. This is difficult to do. Why is that? The difference between the ancient and people of today is as remote as that between heaven and earth. How could we ever even stand even with them? However, when we attentively undertake this job, we can definitely surpass the old masters. This principle is a certainty that you, that you still do not yet clearly understand, only because your thinking scatters like wild birds and your emotions scamper around like monkeys in the forest. If those monkeys and birds once took the backward step to inner illumination, naturally you will become integrated. This is a means whereby, all through, you, all through you are turned around by things, you can also turn things around. Being harmonious and pure like this, do not lose either the eye of oneness or the eye that discern differences. Take one stalk of vegetables to make the six foot body of Buddha. Invite the six foot body to make one stalk of vegetable. This is divine power that causes transformation and the Buddha and the Buddha work that benefits being beings. When you have completely finished taking care of the food, see what is there and place it here where it belongs. When the drums beat at the bell and the, or the bell or the bell rings, follow the answer line, enjoy the Dhamma meeting. Do not miss even one morning or evening of meeting. Shilaksan, can you read the Japanese version? Thank you. First um, sentence that's most important to me, and um, I try to understand what it means by saying that I need to be resolute and sincere in my intention to to understand the teachings and also um, my my practice. Um, I wasn't. I don't think I found um, to give. Um, an example from my own life uh, being fully sincere in my actions because I feel like my actions are always in accordance with um, what will have a positive outcome to benefit um, my own life. Um, I found a really nice story about, I think it's from the Chinese dynasty or something like that, about a boy called Tang Shan. Um, he was studying with his teacher and they were studying the Heart Sutra 
Um, and the part of the sutra where he said that there is no eye, there is no ear, there is no nose, no body, no mind. Um, the child um, immediately, immediately touched his face and, and said, um, why would the sutra say such things? I, I do have eyes and I do have nose and I do have mouth. Mm. I think that is the best example I could come with when it comes to sincerity and mm, what I, I have maybe to, to opt towards in my practice. Um, was struck to me that the, the child, um, when he acted, he didn't really thought what was right or wrong. He was just more interested in the truth and finding out what what the sutra was trying to say. Um, it took me back. It, it took me back a few years ago when I was in New Zealand. I worked as a nanny for a couple of years, um, and I was fascinating the the. Um, uh, sincerity and the honesty that the children hold, uh, which I feel like uh, ourselves as adults, it's somehow lost as we get older and older, and um, more I can speak from my own um, experience. Um, it's usually when if I was asking, one of them was a one-year-old and the other child was three years old, and if I was asking them questions, mostly were in yes or no, or this is pretty, or this is ugly, which I think the difference with us when, when we explain something, instead of being quite firm about our action or decision, we always try to, to find a way out of it instead of acting with sincerity and honesty. Um, A few paragraphs down, um, it says, this, this principle is a certainty that you still do not yet clearly understand, only because your thinking scatters like wild birds and your emotions scamper around like monkeys in the forest. Um, I think the best... Um, Explanation of this gives um, Sawaki Roshi when he says that we always ask from a habitual mind, which habitual mind is the mind that always makes decision in accordance to what's most comfortable for ourselves. And we always follow our emotions and we always follow uh, what, how this, how, how this incident right here is going to benef benefit me. It says, it follows by, if those monkeys and birds once took the backward step of inner illumination, naturally you will become integrated. Um, it says that if, if we'll reflect in our actions and if we are sincere, we can change and we will be able to understand the teachings of the old masters and the, what they are trying to, to say instead of following the same pattern and um, always thinking of what's best to me, what can I do to, to benefit myself. Another uh, way of explaining this, um, Kodo Sawaki talks about negligence. They said that one of the reasons we 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 act out of habit is because we're negligent in our actions and i can see myself doing that in all of my actions more or less i think uh, the most obvious one was when making the fire i was thinking more of how can i make this quickly and fast so at the end I will have the fire ready quicker so I can take care of other things or I can do this and if it's done, it's done. It doesn't matter 
how it's done as long as I don't get in trouble at the end at the end of the day um, I was being here just me and for the for the one month I think I had more time for me to reflect on myself and um, the way my mind scatters like like wild monkeys and my actions and how um, I always make differences between things instead of expecting things how they are um, I, I always I had um, for the last for the last couple of weeks we had to cook with pumpkins quite a bit and I always differentiated uh, between the spaghetti pumpkin and um, uh, the, the red pumpkin I was always praising the red pumpkin because it was so much better it was sweeter I was it was easier to cook I can make so many dishes I can make cake with it and while I was negligenting the other pumpkin, I was refusing to cook it, or if I was cooking it, I was, oh, this pumpkin, it's, it's not so great. It can make only this dish with it, and it's, it doesn't taste very good. Um, and the whole time I, I was there, and instead of actually trying my best to, to see what this pumpkin has to offer beyond my own understanding of it, I, I chose to, use the same mind state over and over again judging the pumpkin and differentiated one pumpkin from another um, which made me think of um, how I live my own life again it's I always it's like somehow I expected that maybe the pumpkin will change for me it's the pumpkin's fault that it's not up to, to my own standards. I think in, in life it's quite similar. I, I, I always expect for things to change from the, from the outside so I can make change in the inside. So if someone acts in a certain way from outside, they benefit me, maybe I will, I will act in return instead of me taking a step back and realizing that I, I should make the first step and it's it's up to me. It's not up to the to any of you or in, to entire world to to compromise for me. I think Dr. San speaks in one of his talks about um, mm -hmm. kihin, and I don't know if I understood this correctly, but uh, it's always we always expect the person in front of us to take the first step. And if the, I was this morning even watching Mikhail and. I think whatever whoever is in front of me, I, I kind of think like, when is this person going to take a step so I can take a step myself, being inconsiderate of the person behind me. I, I, I don't think I, I thought of, oh, maybe Sebastian is waiting for me to take a step. I was thinking just about me, how Mikhail Action is going to benefit me. I don't know, maybe from my, my other life example, it's, I think it took me 10 years to for to actually to apply for my driving license because I was always blaming the circumstances around I it's always oh the job is not quite good or I live in town or oh maybe I can't get along or it's too much work and and looking back now it's it, it has nothing to do with all those things it was my own choice and my own decision to to justify my action by blaming the the outside circumstances. Um, just the day before you guys came back, I mean, the day before me and Echo, we had uh, breakfast and she made this beautiful jump from the yuzu. We had a few yuzus and um, I think she saved it so we can share it together. And we were in, in the kitchen and we were making breakfast and I, I grabbed the bread and then I grabbed the, the jam to bring it inside, but the lid was open. So when I, I took the jam, it, it felt on the ground and it broke. And um, 
Yeah, it was my mistake, and I, I was sorry, and I, I said I, I'm sorry for what happened, but, and um, she understood, of course, but then we talked, and she said, you know what, part of the practice is saying sorry once is enough. You don't have to say sorry over and over and over again, because I think she said in the Western world, it's something, it, it justifies your actions, and the more you say sorry, the more you make it feel like it's okay, and, and, it's, and it's true. When you, this way, it, whatever you do, and then you say sorry, it kind of makes it, makes it all right, which you should, because the next time, you know it's a way out. The next time you're gonna do the same thing, and you're gonna say, I'm sorry, and it's gonna be okay. Um, an interesting statement or comment someone made, I'm not quite sure about Western thought. Western thought that it's based on development, and it's something that happens in the future, and, and uh, comparison to Buddhism, which Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, it's here and now. I can say how that incident and how can me saying sorry can lead to, oh sure, next time I'll try better, things will get better in the future, which that it's, I sh of course, what is done is done. But Eko San said, now this happened, just it, it's better if it's not happening and you should try not to happen in the future because by continuing apologizing it's not really gonna change anything which is probably what Sawaki Roshi said by having uh, acting from a habit Another statement that I would like to discuss, it's, I think it's before the last one. Um, take one stalk of vegetables to make the six foot body of Buddha, invite the six foot body to make one stalk of vegetables. This is a divine power that causes transformation in the Buddha world that benefits beings. I come from a society where, I mean, I think everyone comes from the same place, but the way I've been brought up, it's, it's, not, it's my, my parents' fault, but Everything, um, we always, we give too much significance to certain things and no significance to other things. It's, it's always in accordance, again, to our own preferences. And we, we don't, we don't appreciate and respect and have gratitude for everything equally. Mm -hmm. When I was in my, my Tenzo training, I one morning I I started making the fire and I had no paper um, and I couldn't start the fire. And I, I wasn't very good at it anyway, but I had only wood and and there was no paper in the kitchen and I was running out of time. And looking through things I found I finally found this like piece of a corner, like half a page of paper, which I will never look twice at it, it wouldn't matter. But when I found it it was, I felt so happy. And with that piece of paper, I, I started the fire, which I was able to cook the food and to offer food to everyone and so we can work. And that kind of brought clarity to the meaning of things and how things that we think it, they're not important because we don't need it at the time, um, it, it has its, its place and it's, it should not be, um, unappreciated. Maybe with, with, with cooking as well, I think that when you cook um, and how different in, in, in ingredients or how different spices can make such a huge difference in the food, especially with salt, you think that, oh, this pinch of salt, it's so insignificant. And, but actually when you add it to the food, you can turn the food and being so delicious. What came again by reflecting in my own action at this resistance to change, this 
habits that are so hard to change and always wanted to have my own way instead of accepting the practice and and giving 100% we were when the kitchen me and echo son and I think I was feeding Maya and then I, I took the spoon and I washed it and as I washed it I just I rushed to put it straight in the in the glass and echo son said I think it's better if you dry it before you put it there and she was right and but still, some part of me is just didn't want to accept it. And of course I did right and I put it in the glass. But if she wasn't there, I would have just done it exactly the same. Because I do things all the time, just in the way that it's easier for me and not really being considerate how it affects in the long term and how it affects others around me. I'm um, trying to find the balance um, in life as well because mm, mm. coming to food few years ago I worked in, in while I was in college to support myself I had to work in restaurants for a few years and and I came in part of course with food and people relations with food and mm, now looking back I am understand how much food was wasted and we never took in consideration the the waste or that what is done it's so inconsiderate and I didn't care I just cared for me to pay my college fees the people they're working they all have their own personal agenda um, and even if the I think everyone understanding was or excuse was uh, sure it's nothing it's wasted everything will go where it came from and I think that's one ex one extreme of it and um, I think yeah thinking like this we can justify absolutely everything but last year working in a nursing home we had um, everyone would be in their 90s and they in Ireland in I think 1912 1920 I don't want to say the wrong age was the the starvation pe period which was no food, people were dying because there was no food to eat. Um, and now I can see in, in, in the nursing home, people were, even they had everything they needed, but they were stashing little pieces of bread and the napkins and take them with the room just in case there would be no food the next day. But with that as well, we'll find bread from six months before or one year, cookies from one year before stashed under the bed or in the drawers. So I don't think that's, that's good either. And Ichiyama, and I think, mentioned and tried to explain the importance of studying the old masters, um, but also we have to practice and apply it to our in our everyday life. It always, with judgmental mind, I'm trying, I'm trying to justify and say, what is the, what is the point to study this? You know, the teaching so much. I can just do what I do, and you know, it's not necessary for me to study, but. I can, it's, it's not, I don't know if it's related to this, but uh, when I was about 10 or 11 and I was going to play with my friends, which are a few blocks away from, from my house, uh, my mom my mom was trying to teach me, don't come home after five o'clock, it was winter time, don't come home after five o'clock because it's not safe, it's dark outside, try to come before that. Um, and that was something she was trying to teach me because she was older than me and she knew better. Um, I mean, and that in that incident. 
and I just ig ignore her. And one day I come home around 5.30 and it was dark and I got robbed. Um, and yeah, I think we should listen and pay more attention when people are trying to teach us. Questions? So you're finished with the talk? Yes, if anyone has question, it would be great so I can, I find a bit difficult to... Um, I, I don't know if there's a minimum amount of time you're supposed to talk. Um, in my mind, it's not a problem if people talk only for 30 minutes, but uh, they come to get to the point and ideally it's something that even it's only 30 minutes, but people uh, still remember it one year later, it sticks in their mind. Uh, better than people talk for two hours, but, but everybody's just bored. So it's not so much about uh, how much you talk, but mm, one thing is you have to kind of walk a, a, a line between the text that you're reading and uh, that you're responsible for on that day. Um, and talking about your own uh, experience. So uh, the idea of this study period in winter is not that we want to talk about the words of Dogen. On the other hand, what I feel right now in two days talk and also previous talks that uh, I sometimes wonder, well, what does that have to do with Dogen's text? You're talking about your own personal experience, which is good, but why don't you connect them to the text stronger? Um, so you don't have to kind of go over each sentence over and over. Some of them might be more interesting for you than other sentences. But, I mean, there, there's a lot in here that you didn't even mention. I mean, you read it in the beginning, of course, but... For me personally, for example, what I like, especially in today's part, is this. Although you are turned around by things, you can also turn things around. That's uh, the second mm. line on page uh, 38. And then later there's the cryptic one. Uh, take one stalk of vegetable to make the six-foot body. Invite the six-foot body to make one stalk of vegetable. And over, and uh, I mean, on each page, you have lots of these things that are worth kind of investing. What, what is he talking about there? And then, of course, it shouldn't be just, as I said in the beginning, just text study, but you relate it to your own experience. Like, um, maybe Dogen Zenji is trying to point out at this, 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 and then in my life, this could mean this. And what people are doing recently, a lot of they, they talk about their life, and at the end, you kind of, Look back at the text and you wonder, well, there's a lot in the text and there's a lot that the person spoke about, but it's not really so much related. Uh -huh. So uh, I think, well, especially if like today you have only 30 minutes of stuff from your own experience, why would you not connect more to the text and say, well, let, let's go and, and hear this I do not understand. Maybe it could mean this, maybe it could mean this. I feel I feel that the the six foot body of Buddha and, and take one stalk of vegetables and make six foot body of Buddha invite the six foot body to make one stalk of vegetable. Maybe I, I misunderstood the text. I thought it's not discriminating between things and seeing things equally and for me, that was the example. Maybe oh, I the see, I see. Paper. I said okay, then that, that evaded me. That uh, okay. like yes and. 
Yeah. Ah, that was the the pumpkin sound light. Yeah, see that it baited me. That that. So maybe it's just that I'm not attentive enough, but I mean, not only today, but also the last couple of times. Often it would be more helpful for me if you kind of go a little bit actually once more over the text. Say, well, this, this is a sentence by Dogen. Maybe it could mean this. And in my life, it would mean this. So this is uh, completely, totally unrelated to your actual talk that you gave, but um, like yesterday we had this uh, example of Soji. Um, we had wider cloth, then we could save some time um, cleaning the hallway. Of course, if the cloth is smaller, Maybe it gets a little bit cleaner, but also takes more time. Um, also, there was Mui, the, the American guy, who also, once he had the suggestions, well, we could actually make a kind of mop. We attach the cloth to a stick that's one, eight, uh, one meter eighty, and we could actually do it one, one time. <laughs> Just like you see on, on, at airports, for example, they have these big things. Um, well, we actually, we never tried it, but it seems like a possibility. You could build it at Antaishi and it would save a lot of time rather than run there at least three times. You go one, in one wash, you do it, and maybe we could reduce Soji time 15 minutes to five minutes. And then you have 10 minutes extra to, to drink your coffee. Actually, I saw uh, Shohaku Okumura's place. They do it with a stick, I saw like some this. Yeah, that's, that's American style. Yeah. <laughs> So it makes complete sense. Uh, well, there, there's also this, this famous example, famous because I'm, I'm repeating it all over and over, that uh, grass cutting in the summer and to collect the grass, uh, Mui decides, well, it makes it's much faster if I collect it with a bulldozer. So he's kind of speeding around with the bulldozer and everybody puts the grass on the bulldozer and he's speeding to the compost place rather than kind of putting on the pickup truck, getting it off the pickup truck. And, the pickup truck gets stuck or, or you have to do it manually and stuff like that. And uh, Samu is over at three, so what does Mui do? He gets off his bulldozer, puts on his running shoes and runs down to the bus stop and back because he needs to <laughs> train him, so he has to move himself. So That also seemed a little bit kind of American to me, kind of make the least amount of work during work time, but then exercise later so that you stay in shape. Um, uh, tomorrow, uh, this morning, I noticed like, like a lot of time, a lot of time that there's uh, this talk about uh, talking during Samu in, in, in Antai, who's talking most, uh, you talked yesterday, but, but you talked the day before, and I heard you, heard you talk, but you were chatting at that time. Um, so in the morning, again, people were uh, drying the dishes and are chatting and laughing and... Um, why not, you could ask, uh, why not have a good time during Samu, why not uh, have a good time when you dry the dishes? There's really nothing wrong with sharing a laugh and we don't always have to have these kind of Sawaki Roshi faces, go bent down, uh, mouth and always have this grim face of life is suffering. So uh, why not talk uh, when there's uh, the time for it? Um, so that what in my mind that relates a little bit to the Soji topic um, because what I once I think I said, uh, I, said uh, I told it to Tobui um, but kind of um, from our Western perspective the Japanese seem to be a little bit obsessed with Soji like as uh, Sebastian said yesterday I never really saw the hallway really dirty it's never really dirty and still we clean it every day. Well, you could say because we clean it every day, it's never dirty. Uh, but still in Germany, maybe you would clean in the winter the hallway once a week. 
uh, every Friday or so because I mean it doesn't really get dirty especially during the winter we don't really have to do it every day still we do it every day and we do it in a way that could be more efficient like we use the mop um, we could use a broom that's one, eight, one meter eighty wide and then we use the mop and we go there twice and the, the whole way is nice why don't we do it like that um, well I think that the soji has two meanings and samu and kind of uh, drying dishes cleaning dishes is basically the same one thing is you need to do the net not job needs to be done it might not be perfectly dirty it might not be really dirty but if you don't clean it it will get dirty so one idea of soji is you want to keep things clean uh, samu needs to be done there's work to be needs done uh, food needs to be cooked and afterwards the dishes need to be cleaned another uh, meaning in soji that we often overlook is we're living in this place if there wouldn't be a hallway well how would we get to the toilets at night uh, uh, thanks to these pillars thanks to the roof we have a dry right now so soji in a way is, is a way of express expressing your how do you say gratitude to the place that you're living there so it's, it's a way of getting physical with the place um, even if the hallway is not super dirty day to day you get it physical and express your gratitude by cleaning um, so this question couldn't we make it more efficient is a little bit like for example sebastian is back in germany with his girlfriends uh, girlfriend and well i don't know about sebastian but if it was me maybe the first thing i want to have is sex and you'd have sex with her but she wants to go to the christmas market okay that, take, that takes the time okay okay we will go to the christmas market now let's have sex no first we need to light the candles and there needs to be wine okay let's get the cheapest wine from our aldi market and finally when she's in the mood okay now i have to do the petting thing and kissing and uh, it takes all so much time can't we get over this and get to the real business and of course from her perspective well i don't know about sebastian and, and the girlfriend but it seems to be kind of the typical scenario from her perspective that's all part of the process all important that you go together to the christmas market uh, you light the candles there's a wine and you don't right start there with the action but well the action has already started and the petting is also part of the process and the kisses and everything <laughs> and you don't try to make it more efficient of course you could say well i put a big sponge on my face and kiss you with that it goes so much faster that's kind of like this mop thing of course we can do it like that it's faster but the japanese style of soji is such more physical more intense and when you say well but but it's not really so dirty well maybe it's not really dirty but maybe you're not really looking at it it's kind of I don't really see the the point of kissing i mean what are we doing there so it's a waste of time well maybe not really in the kissing and th that's kind of also the the, the, the thing with the chatter during some i can still do the work and make a joke i can still dry the dishes and make a joke yeah but um again when you're kissing you're not trying to say uh, saying to your, to your girlfriend oh I, I know this new joke can i tell you about this joke it's maybe sometimes if it helps the mood but a lot of times it would prove to your girlfriend well this guy his mind is somewhere else obviously or uh, you're not talking about the recent kind of sucker results when you're having a date with your girlfriend because it would prove to your girlfriend well this guy is obviously his mind is in the bundesliga right now and it's not uh, with me 
So that's kind of the point. It has nothing to do with your talk today, but kind of with the question of Soji. Why don't we do it more sufficient? Or why are we not supposed to chit chat during uh, cleaning the dishes? Because your mind is somewhere else at the point. You wouldn't do that same chit chat if you had a romantic date with your girlfriend at that point. Because your mind would be there. And in Samu and during cleaning, often your mind is not there. Why? Because you don't have the same intensity that you have during a date. And that's sad. That's sad, kind of. Or when you say, well, the, the, the hallway is not so dirty, we don't need to clean it today. It's like telling your wife, well, we kissed yesterday, why should we kiss today again? We can do it tomorrow. Yes, of course, of course. I mean, if it's a waste of time for you, then probably you shouldn't be kissing. Okay, uh, has nothing to do with, with the talk. Thank mm -hmm. you. 